Okay, uh, let's continue with our third talk uh, today. Uh, I'm glad to present Carla Garcia, uh, who will speak about uh, some things related with flat Riemannian metrics, the closed spin flow. Please. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot, Oscar. Um, well, thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, it's very nice for me to be here because I started to study these things thanks to this workshop several years ago. So, yeah, so thanks a lot. Um, well, I will talk about uh, flat Riemannian metrics. But before going into that, I will present my, uh, the objects we are interested to study. So <clears throat> we can consider uh, a smooth manifold. So we fix this manifold and we take uh, all the metrics we can put on that manifold. That space is going to be called the space of Riemannian metrics. This space can be equipped with a topology. So somehow uh, this measure how close the metrics are and also their derivatives. And one have to be careful when this manifold is compact or non-compact. When it's compact, um, there's no problem, but when it's non-compact, it's there are two different topologies and so, but in our case we will take m to be compact so we don't we won't uh, mention any for their descriptions okay so we have this uh, space of Riemannian metrics and we can have an action of the diffeomorphism of M in here. So we take a diffeomorphism of M and a metric. And the action is going to be by pulling back the metric. And this is going to give us the modulo space of Riemannian metrics. So it's this quotient. Basically, we are taking all the metrics that are isometric between them. So here are the representatives of, of the isometry types of the metric. Okay. So this spaces are not that difficult uh, this this one is going to be a convex cone so is something contractible but when we put some curvature constraint is when things get difficult so uh, we can put for example the notation is like this So these are all the metrics <clears throat> that you could put on M with positive positive scalar curvature. And one can also think the same for the model space. So the notation is like this. So it's taking this quotient. By the diffeomorphisms of M. And one can put any other curvature constraint, like, I don't know, sectional curvature. 
Orichi Kurvatu. Very close to zero. Okay, so when we put these curvature constraints, it gets quite difficult to study these spaces. So the idea is um, we want to see if we can deform our space keeping the same curvature. And so even knowing if they are connected or no is quite difficult. And for example, for these spaces when M is a sphere, in lower dimension, they are contractible, but in some other dimensions, um, they have um, infinitely many uh, path components. So their topology could be, could be quite um, interesting. And well, as I said, even saying if they are connected or not is saying a lot. Okay. And for this talk, I will specify one curvature constraint, which somehow it's like maybe the simplest one, which are the flat matrix. So a flat metric is just a metric with zero, zero uh, sectional curvature. And we want to study this model space of flat metrics. And so let's see what do we know about a flat manifold. Uh, well, I have to say that in here we are thinking M to be closed. So for all the talk, I will think I'm closed. Uh, flat manifold. Okay. So we start, <coughs> start with a flat manifold with its metric, and we consider its universal cover. So this is the universal cover, and we can leave this metric to the universal cover. Since uh, this universal cover is simply connected and also will have a constant section of curvature equals zero. We know that there's an isometry between this space and the Euclidean space with sigma, the usual metric. So in this way, we can consider now this covering. And um, it's going to be a Riemannian covering as well. And we can consider the deck transformations of this covering. So it here. Gamma are going to be the, the transformations of the covering. And this is going to be a subgroup of the isometries of Rn. These are um, isometries. Of Rn with the usual metric. Okay, so as you can see, having a flat metric led us to a group. And this is a special group. So here we have this, we 
have some relation to groups. These groups are called either back groups And the properties of this is that they are discrete. This as a group of the isometries of Rn. This is torsion free. Torsion free. And well, since we are talking about compact manifolds, we will ask also that the quotient between Rn and gamma is compact. Okay. So, um, what we are saying is that if we want to study flat metrics, we have to study uh, these Weber back groups. And as we are fixing this manifold, this M, not every Weber back group is going to give me a flat metric of this one, since it also gives me different flat metrics. But if we take another flat metric for the same Um, flat manifold, the relation between the groups is that now this new Weber back group is going to be um, conjugated by an affine transformation. This alpha is an affine transformation. So every flat metric that we can put in here is related to all the um, conju uh, fine conjugations of the group gamma. Okay. okay. So to see how does this work and how these type of groups are, we are going to see an example. So we have the two torus. So we can draw So the flat torus looks like this, relating these two edges and these two. And to find the beeper back group, so we can put it inside R2. So it is R2. And what we're going to have is the action that desolates our Euclidean space like this. And this is given by taking the translations of two linear independent vectors. We can take the, the usual basis of R2. And so if we can take the translations, if we take here X, um, point in R2. So the translations are X plus one, X plus V2. And our Weber back group is going to be the generator, the general, well, 
the group that is generated by these two translations. And our Taurus with the flat metric is just this quotient of R2 by gamma with the in induced metric, I will put it like this, given by the usual metric of R2. Okay, so, but that's not the only flat metric we can put in the torus, right? We can think of whatever other two linear independent vectors, P1 and P2, and that will also give me a paperback group in the sense that we can't take the translations of P1 and P2. And then that will give me uh, another torus with a different um, flat metric. And now we want to relate these flat metrics into some space we know. And the easiest way is to see this as a matrix. So we can put this B1 and B2 as a matrix. And this is this is going to live in the general linear group. Here. Okay. So we are saying that all the flat metrics are living here for the two tops. First, we have that we are considering this, this space. Then since we are interested in the model space of flat metrics, we have to see when these two metrics are going to be isometric. So for example, if we just rotate them, they are going to give me torus that are isometric or else I will reflect them. So we have to do some quotient with the orthogonal group. And there's also the ones that give me the same group. So if we can, if we consider, for example, So we have this tessellation and we have this lattice. So this is going to be generated by these two vectors, but it's also going to be generated if we take these other two vectors. So we have to also relate them. And that's why we take, we do as well quotient with the unimodular matrices that the notation we put is this. These are the um, integer matrices. In sets such that the determinant of u is plus minus one. Okay. Do you have any question? And so this is. Um, the model is space of flat metrics for the two tops. Okay. 
So as you see, we first need this beaver bat loop. And with this beaver bat loop, we can um, see who is this uh, modular space of flat matrix. And there's this result from Wall that tell us who is this model space of flat matrix. So as I, as I said before, so we start with this bigger back group, well, with our flat manifold, and we get some bigger back group. These bigger back groups are also classified for some dimensions. For dimension two and three, they were classified also by the wall. And then, uh, as I said before, all, all the uh, affine conjugations of this group are going to give me all the flat metrics of a fixed, a fixed manifold. So this is this first group. So I'm taking all, all the affine transformations. This is the affine transformations of Rn. Which when you when we conjugate gamma, so gamma is the one that when we do quotient with to R M, they are isometric with the usual metric, well with the induced usual metric of R M. And so if we take all of these type of groups that stay in the isometries of Rn, they are going to give me all the flat metrics. Now we have to make quotient with the isometries of Rn, as in the example of the torus. And then we also have to make, um, to identify the ones that give me the same group. So this is the normalizer of, of gamma. So these are the ones, they are, these are the affine transformations that makes uh, this one be exactly gamma. Mm -hmm. So this is the model space of flat matrix. And from here, what um, the work is, well, what I was doing is first, to compute these spaces in a way that uh, we can study them more precisely. For example, as, as in here that we find this expression. And second, <clears throat> to see if we can say something about their topo. So these are like the two aim um, things to do. Okay, so first we need to see how is this classification of beaver pack groups looks like. So here we have the classification of, of affine equivalent classes of closed flat manifolds. Uh, here in dimension two, we have the two torus and the climb bottle. So this is the one that we identify these two edges and here with the opposite direction. As you can see, this paper back group for this, for the climb bottle is these two translations. These are the translations with the canonical base. And we add here the reflection. Okay. For dimension three, we have 
uh, then that manifold. One example is just making S1 times the Cohen bottle. And, <clears throat> and here again, these are the translations with the basic vectors of R3. And here we, we have this, the reflection we had before. And these two classifications were done by Wolf, the one before. And he studied uh, several properties for the Bibelba group. Actually, he, he studied that one can construct Bibelba groups for the next dimensions, having already known the previous dimensions once. And, and for the next dimensions, for dimension four, I don't know who is who was the first one to do some classification, but I took the list from a thesis of Lambert and also his notation. And well, here we see an example of a four-dimensional flat manifold where its Viberba group are these translations and this other generator. Okay. And doing the computations, one can see how is the moduli space of flat metrics. So as we had before, the moduli space of flat metrics for the two torus was this double quadri quotient. The set and the clan bottle we will have that is uh, actually homeomorphic to two times the yield. So it turns out that having this generator, uh, you will have a more or less options. So that's why somehow you can reduce it like this. Mm. And in this other case, And it's going to be somehow similar to the torus. where this gamma zero two is a subgroup of yield two set. Okay. And yeah, just to complete for this other four dimensional flat manifold. We get that this is homeomorphic to three times the real numbers. Okay. So when one compute this model space of flat metrics, we get things like this. In some cases, they are quite easy. And in some others, we have these double quotients. And the way to say something about their topology is to study this double quotient. So uh, there's quite 
a lot of theory of this, uh, thanks to different settings, for example, in number theory and take Muller theory. They study who, who, well, how can we see this space? And also they study actions of discrete groups and that in, in that space. So we are going to see how that works. Okay, so we have this double quotient. First, we are going to see what happens to this part. Okay, usually, um, I think it's uh, done in take Muller theory, they take out the scalars. So they also, I will put it like this. So they, they uh, identify the metrics with that differ from, from some scalar. In our case, uh, they are important because I mean, if two metrics, we will, if one metric we multiply by an scalar, they are not going to be isometric. But to see this uh, identification clearer, we are going to identify them. And in the end, we will have the, this real line. So uh, I will put it like this. Um, and identity such that lambda is the real. Okay, so these are yours, like multiplying by a by an scalar. And so this space is going to be the next one. So we we are going to give. Uh, representatives. <clears throat> uh, so we take any pair, well, any matrix. This matrix is going to give me an ordered basis, which is this one. So we can rotate this, this basis in order to. to take them to take this vector in this uh, axis and then we can scale them to put this vector exactly to be with norm one. So we will get here a representative of this matrix. So with this idea, this is going to be homeomorphic to the half plane hyperbolic space. Okay, so this is one part. The other part is to see how this group now acts in this hyperbolic plane. And for this, um, so we have <clears throat> that, I mean, this whole group is not going to act here because in here we are already identifying positive determinant with negative determinant. So the ones that are going to act are the ones with positive determinant. So we, there's a notation for this group, which is SL to sit. are the matrices in GL to Z. Z 
such that the dominant of u is one. And now this group is go to Z. will act in the hyperbolic plane by Mobius transformations. So this is really nice. I mean, this these transformations act um, quite nice in, in this space. And one can even uh, compute the fundamental domain of this action. And so we will get something like this. These two edges identify like this. And so this is the our fundamental domain. And so if we make the edges identifications. Actually, we'll get an orbifold, but it's hard to draw. <laughs> so this space is, is going to be homeomorphic to a puncture sphere. So a sphere without a point, which is homeomorphic to R2. So it turns out that this model is space of flat metrics for the two torus is homeomorphic to R3. Since we have to add these scalars, as I told you. Okay. So we have all, all the things we need. So um, but, so basically, first we need the classifications of the Bibrapa groups. Then we compute this model space of flat metrics. And when we get this type of double quotients with some discrete subgroup here, we can study this fundamental domain in this way. So this is how we get uh, our results. The first result tell us um, that um, all the moduli spaces of three-dimensional closed flat manifolds are contractible except for two. So this one and these ones are not contractible. Okay, so the way to do it is case by case. First one have to get a nice list of the groups. And then do the computations, the, the model space of flat metrics. So for this, we use this Wolf result. Gino. So for this first space is quite easy because here you get uh, an equation with matrices. So you can even do it with a program. And actually this, this side is not hard because in the end it's going to be uh, homeomorphic to uh, actually diffeomorphic to an Euclidean space. So somehow it's quite manageable. The difficult part is to know who 
to this normalizer is because I mean there's some situations with the when one has to stay in the same lattice with the translation so this gets a little bit difficult but well using this one can compute this model space of that matrix and actually Uh, these computations were were already done by Gang in 2006. Uh, she did it in, in a different way, but um, we got almost the same results. Only there were some. Uh, well, I I did some corrections in some of the of her groups. And yeah. So with her work and with some and um, adding some other computations, one can get who is the moving space of flat metrics. And then from that, what is new is uh, studying the topology of those spaces. And as I said before, the way to do it is to study the action of discrete subgroups of GL to set well, of SL2 set in the hyperbolic point. And so for these two um, flat spaces that, uh, that their model space of flat metrics are non-contractible, they are homeomorphic to this. So flat for is one times the quadrant photo. And for this, the two, they are both homeomorphic to cylinder. Uh, times two times the reals. So that's why they are not contractible. So already in dimension three, there are some interesting examples. Okay. And now um, I continue for dimension four, but as you remember, there were a lot. So there are 74. So I only computed the model space of flat metrics for a family. This family of uh, flat manifolds, their beaver back group looks like this. So here we have their translations and with only one generator of this type. Okay, and the way we compute this model space of flat matrix is as well using using this result. And in this way, we got a bunch of examples. And as you can see here, the now the this double quotient gets with higher dimensions of the matrices. So only for for this type of double quotients we could use the technique we had before. So we I, I couldn't study the topology of all of them. In and well, and some other cases they were quite straightforward. But um, I could say a little bit about some of them and it turns out uh, an interesting one, which is this one. Wait, I press that. So this one, it's model space of flat matrix. It's going to be Homeomorphic to a three 
making sure it's here. Times two times. There we are. So in here we we are getting interesting topology already. Um, yeah, and so now the goal will be like if we have the Bieber back group, how to compute this model space of flat metrics more straightforward, or even if we can say something about their topology in a more direct way. Um, well, maybe there are quite uh, some ways to do it. Actually, this type of double quotients were studied by uh, Bilderich, Tushman, and Mikhail Wiener. And the way to do to study these double quotients, they use um, rational cohomology theory. Well, so, so they study the rational cohomology groups. So in my case here, this group changes. So we will have subgroups of this guy. So maybe some results could go through, but yeah. Uh, there, these are still things to work. Um, well, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks a lot for your attention.